Hello, welcome to Romero Threads on YouTube where it's all about embroidery. In today's video, I'm gonna show you my workflow and the checklist that I use to complete my embroidery designs quick and easy. And I'll show you how to digitize it for both polo shirts for flats and 3D puff for hats. And before we get started, this is the checklist that I'll be using to make sure I'm not missing a step or I'm not missing an important setting in the software. Let's get started and I'm here in the software and here we have the design. Of course, we wanna put our grids just to kind of help us line stuff up. Just real quick about the checklist is not in any particular order. So you can mix and match certain steps around. Everybody has different workflows and usually you'll change your workflow from project to project. And for this software, I'm using Wilcom 4.5 Studio Designing and really it doesn't matter which software you use. Okay, that's why I'm choosing a very basic type of designs. Once you have the design ready, okay, we want to get into the analyzing phase. We want to analyze our design. First thing we want to check for is the size of our design. And here I have it set at uh, width 3.5, which is very polo shirt friendly and a height of two inches height. That's pretty much a good size for hats and polos. When I'm working with Wilcom, there are three windows that I like to have open and they are these three. So they are the object property, color object list, which is the sequence and the design information. This one on the right, the design information, is just feeding me a lot of information. It's telling me how many stitches in total. It's telling me how many colors, how many trims. Also, it'll if I get to stitching, it'll tell me what's my maximum stitch, my minimum stitch. This one in the middle, color object list, this is my sequence. This will tell me the order of operations. And then my object properties, this is pretty much all my settings. Each object has its own setting. Once I got my sizing correct, I'm gonna lock it down with K. I'm gonna dim it, okay? Just so it could be pretty transparent. So here, if I'm following my checklist, first thing I wanna do is my sequence. And let me show you a picture how I go about doing my sequence. Really, I'm chopping up this design into pieces and usually sequence when we're talking about the sequence where do you want to start where do you want to end best case scenario you always want to start from the center and work your way out also from the bottom work your way out it's not always possible to do it that way you want to follow that formula as much as possible so what i want to do first i want to start here in the middle but i want to kind of make a center run all right from the middle side down to my other side and this is like killing two birds with one stone bam now bringing it back okay that's another thing is you want to avoid unnecessary cuts and i'm going to try to do this whole design with only two cuts that's a center run here okay as you can see let me just show you a quick uh, rundown of what it's doing. It's gonna come down, stitch, bam, bam, and then it's gonna return, come back. All right, quick underlay, global underlay. Now what I wanna do, I wanna break this into pieces. And one of my favorite tools is the column B. This is one of my favorite. If your software has this, recommend it. Because what you do is you digitize one side. All right, so I come here, I'll digitize this first side. and then push enter and then I do the other side all right it's just less thinking all right as I'm curving I'm gonna bring it in here bam all right just one thing here control H set my stitch angles so on the checklist uh, number five was stitch angles and just want to make sure your your angles are good Okay, actually I could set my underlay. So number six on the checklist is underlay. So what I wanna do, I just wanna do a double zigzag. Bam, take that out. Let's continue. Same thing, column B. So I'm gonna start here, it has a little curve. Come here, go straight. Now do the B side. That's why it's called a column B, because you have the A side and the B side. All right, control H to control your angles. And I want it to be 90 degrees here, 
all the way probably to the middle. You don't want to go too much. H. So here it's telling me that I'm going to end here, but I actually want to end here in the middle. All right, bam. And here I have like this triangle. I don't know if you can see this triangle here. This corner, we could, we, it's called a cap. If anytime you have a corner that looks like this, acute angles. Okay, so acute, anything less than 45. Usually anything below uh, 25, 15, 10 degrees. So you can see this degree here is pretty tight. All right, but what I want to do, I want to walk. So here from, you can see this triangle. This is where that stitch ended. Okay, so instead of ending there, I just want to walk all the way up here. Bam. You can also, so like in this, in this situation, you could use a uh, column A stitch, which you're doing both sides at the same time. So you do side A, side B, side A, side B, side A, side B. All right. And I want to finish at this line right here. So All right, one thing you could do also here, we could put like reference points, let you know where your where these little V shapes are at. Here, I have my overlap, tells me how much I'm overlapping. Bam, now this one we could just walk it out from here. Doing column B. And bam, it has like a little curve right here at the end. Do one side, come back, do the next side. And just like this elbow right here. So we nice, need that nice curve right here. Go ahead, let's fix our angles. And then you can visualize it and make sure it looks, everything makes sense right here. All right, bam, that's this side right here. Now I have two trims, so let's see where, uh, showing a trim right here, so oh, I see. So select this H, ends here, I want it to end here, and Select this guy, H. All right, sometimes you just gotta move it a tap bit, S. All right, now, one trim. Yep, bam. So now, we go back, and now we start this left-hand side. And it looks like it's symmetric, but it's not perfectly symmetric. So we want this to overlap here, all right? So you can see how this is kind of going in. So I want it to start right here.
All right, so now when I'm checking my checklist, this is where the checklist comes in handy, all right? Okay, so I've cleaned up my file, and let's go ahead, let's go through the checklist and make sure everything's good to go. So the first thing I wanna do is just check out my design information, so on the right-hand side, showing me here, uh, stitches, 2,411. So stitch count, relatively low. Trims, two. My maximum stitch, 6.6. .6. Real quick, I'm just gonna push play and what I want to do, I want to check out my final stitch out, make sure everything's good. All right, so this this one here, I tested out, made sure that it was good, everything checked out. Let's speed it up a tad bit. And, all right, just the way we have it planned out. Everything's looking good, bam. All right, it's gonna end on the outside. All right, trim there and then it starts again here. All right, and so you could see here, I put a center underlay, just the same way I did on the right-hand side. All right, stitching it out, just the same way that I did the right-hand side. Okay, so the same thing, I'm verifying that there's no unnecessary trims and everything looks good to go. Real quick, let's go through our checklist. Okay, so here our sequence was good. Our tracing, of course, that's while we're digitizing, we're doing the tracing. Our density, we could check our densities. Fills, okay, here is showing me 0.38. Good to go. Length, I know I don't have a stitch longer than 6.6, .6, so I'm good there. Stitch angles, all my stitch angles were done as I was as I was digitizing, so I'm good there. My underlay, so let's select this underlay. Everything is clicked as a double zigzag. All right, that's good. Pool compensation, so here I actually raised it to 0.4. Usually it's at a 0.17. That's kind of like standard. So you can see here, all right, so it gives you a 0.8, almost one millimeter extra, all right? 0.4 all right that just gives it a little bit more boldness some on a, on a design like this since they're all running kind of in line with each other it works out for this design next thing on the list start stops so i already know as i was digitizing i kind of showed where i wanted to start and where i wanted to end tie-ins tie outs all right so i know i have a cut here of course it's going to tie out and then i have a cut here where it's gonna tie out here, all right? So that's fine, everything's good there. Trims and jumps, that was all taken care of as I was digitizing. All right, so checklist, everything looking good. And one thing to add here, okay, I did also make one for puff. And the only difference with puff that I'm gonna say here, all right, um, is our density, switch it to a 0.18. Now there's some designs where this is all you have to do. All you have to do is change the spacing, the density, to a 0.18. So make it a little bit more tight. All right. The only thing you got to do here that I did, all right, here, you might have to make these ends. So you can see here, these are my ends. You might have to adjust these to make them a little tighter. That's just so the, the puff could perforate, really. Uh, anytime you're talking about ends, so here, here, these ends here also, okay. If we were to have some wider openings here on the corners, then you might wanna put in a cap. For But for this design, we have enough perforation for it to get cut open, all right? So I do have the final stitch out. The top side is the flat and the bottom side is puff. And the bottom, the puff came out real good and that's even before doing any cleanup and hitting it with the heat gun. Thank you for stopping by. If you have any questions or comments, leave it down below and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.